Yep. All right, we're going to give this a try. We're going to make this really look like uh, Khan Academy here with the black background and uh, the writing utensil. All right, so today we are going to discuss what a linear U substitution is. It's basically a technique used to integrate. And you've already done this. I mean, we've done U subs, so this is nothing new. But there's something kind of special that happens when your U happens to be linear. So I want to show it to you because it's going to cut some time uh, off of your work when you're doing certain questions in particular in the next unit that we do on differential equations. All right, so let's start with what is a U sub. So U sub is whenever you let U equal something of the form AX plus B. Duff, come on, bud, get your head up. All right, so if U equals AX plus B, then DU would be A dx, right? Derivative of sum, sum of derivatives, derivative of ax is a, derivative of b is zero. Since it's du dx equals a, then du equals a dx. So that's it. That's what it is. And again, why is this called a linear u sub? Because that u is linear. So not that I think I need to do this. I'll give you a couple examples versus non-examples, and there should be pretty obvious. So one example would be if you're doing an integration problem and you let u equal 3x, right? Du would be 3 dx. So notice why is this considered a linear u? Because 3x is linear, okay? As opposed to if u equaled x cubed, du would be 3x squared dx, and that is not considered to be a linear u because x cubed isn't linear. It's a polynomial degree 3, right? It's a cubic. So no bueno. All right, give you one more example here. If u equaled, say, 1 minus 5x, all right, du would be negative 5bx. And so what's the story there? That is also considered linear. Now, notice that something kind of neat happens in that when you take the derivative of something that is linear, what are you getting? You're getting a number, you're getting a constant, 3, right, dx. Here, you're getting negative 5dx. So all of these guys, linear u, look at its derivative. Linear u, look at its derivative. As opposed to here, which this is nonlinear, right, you end up getting this x stuff in here. So we can't have that in the technique we're about to do. So again, the, the point of me showing you this is just to drive home the fact of what an actual linear u uh, looks like. So now you know what it looks like. So what does this have to do with anything? So let's do an integral, right? So let's integrate, uh, say, cosine of maybe 5x plus 1 dx. So really, back in the day, you viewed that as a composition. And so you were taught that, hey, if you have a composition and nothing else works, you don't recognize a function of derivative is that, then you should try u sub. So typically, we let u equal that innermost function. In this, this case, we're going to let u equal 5x plus 1, right? And so then du would be 5 dx. And then I would say something like, and again, other teachers teach this differently than I do. This is how I do it. That's how my brain works. I would say something like, hey, you know, you don't have 5 dx. You only have dx. So what can we do with this 5? Well, since this is an equation, multiply both sides by a fifth. So you end up getting this. And so now what we can say is, all right, so I know dx right here, that's equal to one-fifth du. It says it right there. And then all of this is equal to the cosine of u. So now I'm able to rewrite this integral as the integral of cosine of u times one-fifth du. But we know that one-fifth is just a constant, so it can get pulled out. So I get the integral of uh, one-fifth the integral of cosine u du, and now I do it. Do I know a function whose derivative is cosine u? And the answer is yeah, it's sine u. So I'm going to get one-fifth sine of u and then plus c, right, because the derivative of c is zero. So when you have an indefinite integral, you need to have that constant of integration. So now if you think about it, this problem started with uh, an x in it. It didn't have a u in it. So in order for me to uh, – let me check that out. In order for me to – let's try this little racer feature. Oh, let's go, baby. There we go. Look at that. We can move things. We can erase things. Pretty cool. All right, in order for me to get this back in terms of x, you say, hey, if only I knew what x was and or u was. And you do, right? Because you let u equal 5x plus 1. So this ends up being your final answer. All right. So this right here is your final answer. So now if you think about that, you're like, did I really have to go through 
all of this work to get that answer. So in other words, let's think of it this way. I have the integral of cosine of 5x plus 1 dx, right? So what I can do is I can think of this as cosine stuff, where this is stuff. Do I know a function whose derivative is cosine stuff? Yeah, it would be sine stuff. And you're like, well, not exactly, because you got one fifth. So what does that one fifth represent? It's not the derivative of stuff, because the derivative of 5x plus 1 would be 5. It's actually 1 over the derivative of stuff, and then plus c. And now, think about it. You're getting this answer basically in one line worth of work. OK, so it's kind of like a reverse chain rule. But the real caveat and the catch here is you never read about a reverse chain rule because it doesn't really exist. This only works because U is linear. This concept of using stuff and doing like the reverse chain rule and multiplying by one over the derivative of stuff, that will not work unless U is linear. And if you ask why, you can kind of see it here. Right? When you pick your u to be whatever it is, its derivative initially is just whatever that a value, that slope value of the linear term is, right? It's 5. But you're never going to have that 5. You're going to have 1 over that 5 that ends up getting in the integral after it's all said and done and you do your substitution. Okay, So this works for any, any linear u. So let's kind of see how it plays out. Let's shut this layer off. Let's go to this layer. So let's do another one. So let's do the integral of, say, keep it simple. Um, we'll do 1 minus 3x quantity to the fourth dx. So say I wanted to integrate that. I'm going to actually try and go straight to this u, u, uh, u sub stuff, right, or the linear u sub stuff. So I say, listen, if I was doing a normal u, I would let that equal u. But I notice that it's linear. So when it's linear, I can say, well, let me view this then, this composition, as stuff to the fourth. So what is the integral of stuff to the fourth? Well, I can use the power rule. It's going to be one-fifth stuff, right, to the fifth power. Add one to the power, divide by the new power. So that's just your power rule. Instead of doing it on just a single variable, you do it on stuff. But now, according to this linear u sub, call it a shortcut, call it whatever you want, I have to multiply by one over the derivative of stuff. So the derivative of stuff is going to be negative 3, so 1 over that would be that. And then I would just go ahead and go plus C. And now, you know, you can rip this all together, multiply in any order you want. It's commutative, right? So I could do negative 1 15, uh, 1 minus 3x to the fifth power, and then, of course, plus C. And there is my integral, and that's done pretty quickly. All right, versus, again, I'm doing this for, for note flow here versus the integral from 1 minus 3x to the 4th dx. If you do it the old school way, and you're like, all right, let's do it. But you equal it's in parentheses, right? U equals 1 minus 3x. Du is negative 3 dx. And you're like, oh, I don't see negative 3 dx. I just see dx. So you're like, all right, multiply both sides by negative a third. So now if I rewrite this, this here is going to be u to the 4th. This here is negative a third du, right? So I'm going to get negative one third uh, integral u to the fourth du, which I can do this, negative one third, go ahead and integrate that, u to the fifth, oops, no, oh, let's erase that, I got a little too fast there, all right, you got to do the power rule, right, so when I do the power rule, what am I going to get here, hit the pen, hit this, all right, integral of u to the fifth is one fifth u to the fifth, and then plus, let's just be crazy and go k, all right, and so now what's the story? You get negative 1 15th u to the fifth plus k, and you're like, well, what is u? If only I knew what u was. Well, you let u equal 1 minus 3x, so it's that. And then what do you get? You get the same exact answer, and don't get freaked out because I used c and k. It I mean the same thing, constant of integration, right? This is showing all your work. This is recognizing, oh, if u is linear, I can do sort of the reverse chain rule and I multiply by one over the derivative of stuff. That is the key here. That's what people tend to screw up, right? This is very important, this multiplier, right? This is one over, one over the derivative of stuff. And if you were a great student, 
you would also write, because I don't feel like writing it, that this only works when u is linear. This does not work unless u is linear. All right. Any questions? I didn't think so. All right. So let's rock and roll. Let's go to layer three here. Let's just do maybe one more. So we did a trig function. Uh, let's do one that you commonly see. Uh, so let's go back to yellow. So let's do the integral of, say, we'll go bananas here. I'll give you like a double whammy. 5 over 1 minus 2x dx, right? So how would you do this? Back in the day, you would let u equal the denominator because if you don't recognize a function whose derivative is and you go through your process and do your u sub technique, the thing to do here is let u equal the denominator, right? Well, I don't want to do it that way because I noticed that if I let u equal the denominator, it would be a linear u. So then I'm going to think of this, the denominator, as stuff. So a couple of things. First off, this 5 is, is meant to maybe distract you. The 5 means nothing. So it's really pull the 5 out if you want. 5 integral 1 over 1 minus 2x dx. And I wrote du here. That silliness. That's dx. Okay. So now you're like, all right, well, how do I do it? Well, you're viewing this as one over stuff. So then my question to you is, do you know a function whose derivative is one over stuff? And you should say, yeah, I do. It's ln absolute value stuff. And now times, this is the kicker here, times one over the derivative of stuff. So stuff is one minus two X, derivative of it's negative two. So one over that is one over negative two. Okay, and then plus C. And so at the end of the day, you're going to get negative 5 halves ln absolute value 1 minus 2x plus C. And that's us doing a linear U sub. Let's just show what it looks like when you do the U sub so that you get all warm and fuzzy inside and you have trust in this process, right? So if you wanted to do it the old school way, let U equal 1 minus 2x. DU is negative 2 dx. Don't see that. I just see dx. So negative a half DU equals dx. And so now what do I have? I have the integral. There's a 5 here. There's negative a half du here. And then there's 1 minus 2x. That's a u there. So if I spruce this, the negative 5 over 2 comes out and I get 1 over u du. That's the 1 over stuff that I was talking about. Do you know a function whose derivative is 1 over stuff? You do. It's ln absolute value stuff plus c. Do you know what u is? Well, you do because you the one that let it equal. 1 minus 2x. And there you have it. And so that is a linear u substitution. Okay, making sense here? All right, so I'm going to assign you a homework and it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, and I'll assign it right here. All right, so let's get to layer four. All right, here's your homework. So your homework, homework is going to be evaluate the following, eval the following. And we'll say using the, and I'm making this up because this isn't a real math thing, linear u sub shortcut. Okay, that's my phone going off. That's Mr. Wolf texting on his board. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to make these problems up. So let's make them up. So do the integral of sine of 3x minus 1 dx. So give me one of those guys. Uh, then do the integral of, we'll go bananas here, 2, don't want the 2 freak out, just a constant, means nothing, of 1 minus 7x uh, to the 7th, actually, you know what, make it to the 8th, uh, dx, all right, take you two seconds, then we'll go the integral of 10 over, say, 9x plus 5 dx, and then I got to give you one that you didn't exactly see here so we got to kind of make that up so uh, let's see what else could we do here that would make things rock and roll Ooh, i love it so we'll do the integral of e to the 6x plus 3 let's go negative 6x let's get crazy dx so you got four problems here one two three four all right, do them and then submit them into your Google folder and call the file linear underscore u sub underscore your last name. And I'm just seeing if you follow directions, if you name that a little differently, as long as it's there, I'm not going to lose sleep, but let's see if you can follow directions. All right.
Have a splendid day. Hope you're staying safe and eat some garlic. All right. Take care.